Something Necessary is a film that's set in 2007 after the last um, elections that we had that led to a lot of violence. Uh, but rather than looking at, at the story um, as, a, as, as a sort of enormous commentary of what happened, we, we look at two characters, Anne and Joseph, and we trace how their relationship to each other and, and what happened to them during the violence uh, affects them and each other. It was a difficult film to ma make because we made it just two and a half years after, or, or three years after the explosion um, in Kenya had happened. And, and as you can imagine, it's a little bit difficult to, to, to look at and comment on something so big so soon after it happens. People tend to have, I think, the benefit of, of hindsight and, and make stories about things way after they've, they've happened. And it was extremely difficult, I think, not just for, for me, but for, for everyone involved, for, for, for the actors, it was um, quite brave of them, I think, to depict challenges and take on roles that at the time were still causing you know, such uncomfortable feelings. You know, each person, even on set, had you know, different various opinions and very, various strong feelings. Um, so it was, it was actually, it was an incredibly difficult film to make, but I think an important one to make as well. Well, the biggest importance was to to turn what people so often see as as you know faceless victims into people that you begin to understand. I, th you know, if you look at the cliche of Joseph, you know, whether you're looking at what was happening in Sierra Leone years ago, or or you know when you're looking at at what goes on in the north of Uganda, and more recently, even when you look at Tahir Square and the things happening in Egypt, it's very difficult to, to understand the emotions of these very young, aggressive and angry young men. And, and it became very important for me for the film to, to put a face to those people that you usually see as an enormous mob and you ca just cannot figure out what drives them or, or, or why they are driven to do the things they, they do. At, you know, when you have civil unrest in a country and when, when things like this happen, everybody's a victim. Um, you're, you find that even the perpetrators are victims because there are things that have held them back economically. There are perhaps injustices that reach all the way back to, um, to, to times of independence, issues to do with land. There are so many preconceived notions and I felt that Anne as the person who had lost so much couldn't even begin to address um, the, the things that led to the violence and it became at least to me very important to to build in this character who who would be able to tell us a much broader story. When I first saw the script of the film I was a little bit filled with trepidation because I've got to be honest that there, the, the, I had just in that period done two or three documentaries that explored different aspects of the violence and I was done with it. I, I, I just thought, oh my God, I, I, I don't want to talk about 2007 anymore. I don't want to explore it. Why, why has this script come along? But it just literally took a week or, or two to really get into the script and realize how absolutely important it was to make a film that deeply reflected what had happened, a film that, that hopefully, you know, five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years from now, we can look at and, and remember through these two people, a morsel of, of the madness as it was. Um, when we look at these streams of, of victims or internally displaced refugees, to really understand that the people just like you and me, and, I'm, I, and I love Anne's character because she isn't your typical victim. Um, she's, she's a woman who was going somewhere before her life was turned upside down. You know, it's really funny. It, whenever I used to be asked the question of, of you know, what it's like to be a woman filmmaker and director, I just never used to have an answer to it because in Kenya it is not an issue. There are so many female filmmakers and and to be honest, um, the guys won't like this much, but it's the women who really stand out. Uh, whether you're looking at Wanuri Kahio or Hawa Esimen or, or people who came 
um, before, you know, a lot of the early uh, Kenyan filmmakers, Domi Yambo Odette, uh, Jerry Carago, who's, who's amazing. Actually, the, the people who really shifted things are the women. But I think that if you look at countries like Kenya, where there isn't an enormous financial pull and the people who become filmmakers are really just the people who sometimes leave successful careers like myself to to tell stories because they're burning to tell them. The homegrown industry is, is very, very young. Um, we are, I think because of that, taking inspiration from all kinds of different places. And you'll find that some filmmakers are trying really hard to emulate the Nigerian style, which is a very business-driven model. And then there are a whole bunch of, of other filmmakers who, who view filmmaking as, as art. And aside from that, there's a huge television um, industry growing as well with a lot of soaps being, being made, um, a lot of series being, being written and made. I think a lot of the people who have jumped into film, like myself, don't, you know, don't have a film background but, but are burning to tell stories, are a little bit tired of, of having <coughs> our stories told you know, by, by other people. And so I'm, I'm curious as well to see what the next 10 years of filmmaking in, in Kenya and, and East Africa and the continent are going to be like. Hi, this is Judy Kibinge, and I'm the director of Something Necessary, and you're watching TVM. <laughs>